I want to give God all the glory and honor for what this ministry is doing. You know, we've got a we've got a, a local prison. I say it's local. It's about an hour from here. That uh, an inmate that came through this local jail here that we minister in weekly, and he has taken this this card and the scriptures that that we have taught for years now and he has went over there to that prison a prison that that has this to the prison tells me that uh, we don't need any more ministers we've got enough ministers coming in now and uh they you know they've kind of put me off and that's all right i mean they, they don't see the need and, and i understand that the lord's going to open the door i promise you guarantee he's going to open the door but they don't see that right now but uh, that inmate that came through this study, I mean, it's been years. I've known him for about three years, three and a half years now. And and he has turned into a strong, strong, born-again child of God. And he's teaching people over there in that, in that prison. And I'm going to tell you something. A revival has taken off. There's people in that prison that are getting set free. Not because of some inmate, but because of the truth that that inmate has has saw fit to to take it upon himself to teach and preach as much as he can. He 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 called me a few weeks ago and asked me. He said, "Will you agree with me that I start getting some some more opportunities to speak here in this prison?" And, and and we agreed on it, and boy, it, it has taken off. It has taken off over there. He 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 talked. I talked to him. I think uh, Monday. I think it was when I talked to him, and uh, he said that week he had already preached three times. Maybe it was Tuesday, and uh, he had already preached three times. And that that's 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 a that's a blessing of God to be able to you know. He knows what needs to be done over there in that prison. God does, and he's used it. he's using an inmate to do it. Oh, I, th- I give him all the glory for it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I want you to understand something today. That this very series that we're we're talking about. This is week twenty one of your place in Him. This very series is is what we need to come to understand and realize that. That our place, just like all those inmates, you know, Chad Turner's over there doing all that he knows to do to to build those inmates up, and show them who they are, and and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna tell you this: you're no different. You're no different than anybody else on this planet. God wants you to know that you have a place in His kingdom. This is week twenty one of your place in Him Scripture study, and I want you to get a hold of what your place or where your place is in God's kingdom. And I want you to know without a shadow of a doubt that God wants you to be strong in that place because he wants to use you just like he uses everybody else on this planet that will allow him to. So I'm going to say it once again. This is week 21 of our Your Place in Him Scripture Study series that will go on for another 20 weeks. This is week 21, so 20 more weeks. We've got 41 weeks in this whole entire series. And I thank God for the privilege to be able to do that for you. Partners, you've got a big part in, in, in me having the privilege to do what I do in jails and prisons and on tablets and in churches and rehab centers and all over this nation. You have a part in what God has called us to do. You're partnering with us, and I thank you for it. If you're not a partner of Particle Sun Ministries, pray about what you what you would do, what God would have you to do in this ministry to help us reach the world with who they are in Christ Jesus. And if they're not born again, who they can be in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, to help them see their need of salvation. Glory to God. 
Once again, my prayers for today come out of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. You know, Paul wanted the Ephesians to realize and understand the love and the mercy and the grace and the goodness that God had for them. That's that. That's the reason I do these prayers, because I want the world, every person on this planet, including myself, I want to reinforce the fact that God loves you and he cares for you and wants more than anything in the world for you to know it. Ephesians 1.15, Paul said, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called His holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3, 14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. I thank God. He opens my eyes to that love more and more every day of my life, and he does it through his word. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you. God, for your word, guide me. Lord, use me for your honor and your glory, and I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to be in the next chapter over, uh, Colossians, the third chapter and the 24th verse. It says, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive uh, the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. That The New Living Translation says, remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you're serving is Christ. This, this is so important to, sit, to understand. Let me read the, in the Amplified Classic. It says, Knowing with all certainty that it is from the Lord and not from men, that you will receive the inheritance, which is your real reward. The one whom you are actually serving is the Lord Christ, the Messiah. And I want to talk to you about, today about the inheritance that we inherit in him. And this is so important. The Bible says that we are heirs of God and joint heirs of, of, of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, we are, and, and when, when you say that, I think it goes over a lot of people's heads, and they don't realize that when you're a joint heir with Christ, you you have become His brother, His brother. Now, now let me explain something. Now, this is something that that a lot of people don't don't catch, and I didn't for a long, long time. But but when when Christ Jesus came and died on the cross, and He was raised on the third day for our justification, before that, 
Matthew through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he was called God's only begotten Son. And 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 it's, and for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. We've heard that scripture all of our life, and that's true. He was His only begotten Son till He died and was raised again. And then from 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 then on, Acts through Revelation, what was Christ called? He was called the firstborn of many brethren. And who are those brethren? They're us. It's the born-again children of God that has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And when we accept Him as our Lord and Savior, we ensure ourselves an inheritance through Him. Through Him because we serve Him and because we've made Him Lord of our life. To, to serve something is, is making that something Lord over you. So if we're, uh, if we're uh, serving Christ, He is our Lord. He is our Savior. And for the for the most part, people miss that. They, people miss a lot of things about being being born again because you know they 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 want to be born again. They give their heart and life to Jesus Christ, but they they go through life downtrodden, uh, upset because they don't feel like. They a lot of times, a lot of days, they they don't feel like they're saved. Their flesh lies to them. But uh, I think I think I need to roll back here to uh, uh, Romans the twelfth chapter because this is the key to to living a strong Christian life and and being able to understand that our inheritance in Him we can have it today. We, it, it's ours today. God, we're we're joint heirs with Christ. God's heirs with Christ Jesus because because we've made him Lord. Now let me read Romans twelve and two. This is how you do it. This is how this is how you live a victorious Christian life, receive your inheritance, and and walk in the truth of who you are. And it's Rome it's Romans twelve. Let's let me read one and two. Uh, Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now listen to the second verse. It says, And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. O oh, my Lord, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. Renewing our mind will put us in a state of mind that we can receive our inheritance in him and and know that we can run boldly to God's throne even though we've made mistakes even though that we I mean I'm just willfully stepped out into sin you, you I, I know without a shadow of a doubt there's thousands that, li- that will listen to this podcast that have willfully just sinned just just done it and 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 they need to know that God is a forgiving God. He's a, a loving God, and He wants them not to live in their shame, not to live in their their shortcomings, but to confess that sin to Him, not to me, not to not to the people around him, them, but to Him. He says, "If we'll confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness." Now, if you, if that ain't if that ain't something that I want to inherit and ha- have in my life every day of my life, oh, they ain't a cow in Texas because I do. I want that inheritance. I want that forgiveness. I want that strength. I want that 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 thing that I need every day of my life, and that is to know that I know that God is is on my side. He's lifted me up, and I have inherited His kingdom through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And I'm not going. I'm not going to take anything less than God's best because that's what He wants for us. That's what He wants for us. Uh, I'm almost, I, I, the Lord just gave me this scripture, but Philippians. 419, it says, For my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, 
I've said this for years, that he will. He'll supply your needs. I promise you he will. He will supply everything that you'll ever need in your lifetime. But I'm going to tell you this, uh, the, when, he wrote, when he spoke this to the Philippians, he spoke this, Paul spoke this to Philippians because the Philippians had went out of their way to back him, to sow into him so that he could have resources to go out into the, the world that he lived in and, and do what he done to write the New Testament, to write the, the 13 books in the New Testament that he wrote. The Philippians backed him in, on that venture. And, and he told them, said, look, God will supply all your needs. I'm going to tell you something. You don't invest into the kingdom of God without God backing you up and blessing you for it. I say this all the time to the partners of this ministry. And, and I'll say it from now on. I pray a hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Because Mark 10, 29 and 30 says that's what that's what will happen. Jesus said it. He said, you've not given up anything in this world that you won't receive a hundredfold return in this life today, in this life. Now, it goes on to say in that verse, with persecution. Well, what is that persecution? That persecution is the, the mess that you've got to deal with in this world, uh, being a Christian and, and, and holding your head up and, and proclaiming his goodness. When, when the world says, oh, who is he? What is he? God, you know, my, the God I know and I serve is a, a, a tyrant, an unpleasable tyrant. There's a lot of church people feel that way. They can't, they can't do anything right. And, and that all comes from, from religion. It all comes from misunderstanding what the Word says. Yes, I've read the Old Testament. I've, I've read it all the way through. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm not living under that Old Covenant, and I, no, nor are you. God wants us to walk in His inheritance in this life. He wants us to walk in His inheritance so that we can be strong. And, and, and walk where, the way we're supposed to walk in this world. And that is victorious over, over Satan and all his cohorts. We can do that. That's also part of our inheritance. You go right back to Galatians three thirteen and 14. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. What did he say? He's re Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now let me go on down to the 29th verse. Galatians 3.29 says, If you be Christ's, apostrophe S, if you belong to Christ, in other words, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Promise. What is that? What's that promise? That's our inheritance in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Honey, we, we've got a lot to look forward to. We've got a lot to receive today in, in, the, in the, the big scheme of things of what God wants for us. There's a lot out here that, that, that the Christians haven't been able to receive because they just, they just hadn't received it. I heard a story one time. I won't tell this. I heard a story one time. A preacher had a dream. And the Lord uh, met him in that dream and took him to a big old room and opened up the room. And, 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 and just, just as far as he could see, all the way to the ceiling, as far as that, just a huge room, just full of gifts. He said, what is this, Lord? And he said, this is what I have given my people that they've never received. God wants you to realize that you have an inheritance in him. Now, I'm going to ask you a question today. Are you born again? Have you received that inheritance? Have you ever made Jesus Lord? Are you part of God's family? That's the question. Be, becoming part of God's family is so simple. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It don't say you might be if you're good enough. It says if you'll confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So 
be born again today. Make Jesus Christ Lord. Give him your heart and life. I'm not asking you if you beg God to forgive you 10,000 times. I'm not. I'm asking you, have you ever made Jesus Lord? Have you given him your heart and your life today? Do that. Make Jesus Lord. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Receive your salvation today. Receive your inheritance in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Glory to God. Now listen, I thank God for the opportunity to do what I do. God has given us the the means and the the partners that help us do this to give every bit of what we do away free of charge. Don't cost anything. Does not cost them anything. And I want you to understand something, that, that this is free to you. Enjoy it. Take it for yourself and use it. Go to the website. Download the, the phone app. It's the-prodigalson.com and see what God's Word has in store for you, what God's Word says about you as a born-again Christian or who you can be as a born-again Christian if you're not one. Let's, let's get you born again first and then teach you who you are in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Now, if, I, if you're a partner of this ministry, Partners, thank you. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.